Hello guys, welcome back to Wednesday's video. It's Wednesday. God, it's gone Week's fast. It's flying, isn't it? It is. Just polishing up the old safety glasses, mate. Yep. Got a little job on the mill. I've got mine on too. Got yours on too. Fresh jumper, just removed the uh, the yep. old hazardous standard got to do that draw, draw away. string or whatever yeah. they call it. That's going in the bin. Should save me a head. Yeah. Do you want it, do you want any uh, gloves or anything, mate? Or are you alright? I'm alright for gloves. Yeah. Not super. Cool. I should be alright for I'll uh, risk the dermatitis. Yep. But yeah. So you have got a crank to balance for a lotus, I believe. Yes, it is, a lotus a lamb. And the driver we've got ain't, ain't too good. No. Um, so this is a driver out of something else. You can see we've got a 5 16 by eight and a half deep I think it's slot. Five, yeah. So that fits on our machine and the machine drives that. That will screw into the thread on the end of the crank that holds the pulley on. John has turned one up today for the Lotus. Yeah. A better fitting one. Yeah, and the I'm other just one was terrible. But, and yeah. I'm just putting a slot in it. So we have a whatever size that is, slightly less than eight mil. Probably five sixteenths. Probably it? five sixteenths. Um, and I'm just putting a slot in it. Nice. So as I say, we've got to go eight and a half mil deep, mate. Yeah. I'm doing twenty thou cuts, which is half a mil. Very conservative. Yeah. Uh, we've centered it, so what we'll do is hold this in the three jaw, in the, sorry, three jaw, <laughs> I mean. And what I do is touch on the back, touch on the front, half the distance, zero it, and we know we've got the center. I do. So um, that's how we make the drivers for the crank balance machine. Nice. Um, Busy day yesterday, busy day taking in work, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? it was a hectic day really, wasn't it? Very hectic day, very strange day, close mm, yeah. and a bit muggy. Dripping with sweat. By very the the tired day. men. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yesterday was very busy taking in work, so we are, we've gone from being fairly busy to swamped, as Ram. John would say. Yeah, swamped. swamped. Um, which is good, mate. I like it when we're swamped. Yeah. I feel happy when we are swamped. There's always stuff to do. There is indeed. Uh, so what have we had in? We've had, we'll show you in a minute, but we've got another Cosworth turned up. Yeah. Full Monty. It's out of a four-wheel drive Sapphire. One owner car. Really? Yeah. Done 120,000 mile on its original engine, which is blooming good. Respectable, that. It is. Um, say, one owner. Um, car's all good, he said, didn't need restoring, just tarting up a bit. But he wants the engine freshened up and obviously looking very nice. Yeah. You Which... can tell it hasn't been messed about with because it's still got the cover on it. Yeah. And all the, It looks um... like someone's attempted to recon the rocker cover at some point. Yeah. And haven't faced over the top, which yeah, looks a bit... Yeah, doesn't look too great. Rubbish. Um, you're doing... What's that little motor you're tackling at the minute? Uh, it's just the bottom end for a A-series. But it's out of a Morris, oh. I believe. Oh, is it? What, a thousand? Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, let's go and have a little look in there, mate. Have a look at that. More importantly. Still got to rip the Perkins to bits. So that's, yes. the, that's the V6 uh, Land Rover. So like the three litre that we're doing in yeah, there. Yeah, it's a 306 DT, isn't it, that one? Yeah, this is for actually one of the technicians at Land Rover. Oh, it's right. his own vehicle um, and he's rebuilding it. But this one, unfortunately, Obviously, the cranks are a problem on these. It can break the crank, it can do ends. Worst of all, this is a worst case scenario, it actually spins the main bearing shell. So it Ooh. does a main and spins it in the housing. Yeah, you can see the heat go it's gone through there. Yeah, you can see, and on this one's even worse. Oh yeah. So apparently, he said that Land Rover actually do, not only do they do undersized shells for the crank side, but they do oversized oversized externals housing, for the housing yeah. so the only reason Land Rover are going to do that is because they know there's an issue don't they so all yeah. you've got to do is line home these 
Right. And then you can get it bigger. So he wants these measured just to make sure that we can hone it mm, and yeah. um, do something with it, basically. But yeah, that to me, when they're supplying that, that almost, I'm well, saying this is the some, reason. I mean, if it was sort of 40 years ago, most manufacturers probably would have done that. But nowadays... Yeah, yeah, the, only, yeah. the only company I know was Ford did it with the cross flows, uh, with the Pintos. They did a 15th oh, right. hour external from standard. Yeah. So whether they had a bunch of blocks which need to be owned. But you, if you took the shells out, even though they're original, they would have 15, a 15th hour. So when you did a Pinto, you would always have to measure the housings to make sure right, yeah. it's not a standard one. Because if you buy a standard external bearing, they're not going to fit in. This is an LS block. Oh, yeah. LS1, LS3, I can't remember now. Um, this is in for the customers building this. This has come in for us to check over, make sure it's all right, make sure the bores are good, and give it a pressure test. Nice. Just make sure it's a good block before he goes ahead and chucks a load of money and builds it. Yeah. So, yeah, quite cool, the old LS motors. These, I think you can buy a crate motor, one of these, oh, yeah, fairly you cheap, can. can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under 10 grand. Big power as Decent well. Decent power. That's what Wayne's done, the one that's the BMW we're copying. I think... He bought an LS. The three and the seven are good ones, I think. Yeah, I think I'm he bought an sure, LS3, chucked that in, 500 odd horsepower, jobs are good and about seven grand. Ideal. Ain't worth messing about with. <laughs> Who knows, mate, one day. Well, could have something LS powered. Well, we'll see how we get on with the, um, with the little 3.2. Yeah. But I like the sound of the 3.2s there. Uh, so yeah, this is the Cosy, mate. Yeah. See, it's a, a little bit tired. Yeah, definitely. A little bit weathered see. on the external, which is standard stuff, isn't it? See what you're saying about that cover there? Yeah, someone's painted that, but they haven't faced over the top. Whatever floats your boat. We will do that in a nice original red. Yeah. Um, so it'll all look, yeah, this will all look spiffing. Piddly little turbo. It's a little T3. So job there, I suppose. the only ones that had the T34 was the later Escorts. Yeah. Really, the, well, the big turbo Escorts, they call them. Um, the later Escort Cosworths had the Ford ECU and a smaller turbo than that again. Right. But they were nice and drivable, they spooled up quick and yeah. they were better on the road as standard cars Probably really. Probably better management I suppose by then. Yeah, but the first thing that people do when they push any more than about 300 odd is T34, set of greens isn't it? But this one is all standard, which is nice really. Refreshing. Yeah, so we're just gonna, this is a go through, the no, 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 no problems. It's a bit smoky, he said, but then yeah, I suppose uh, 120. I'm, I'm almost certain like, as to what we're gonna find in there. Bit of bore wear. Looks like it's lost a bit of oil in its time. Most of it's all over the block. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, standard stuff in it. It's probably got a leaky front seal, leaky rear seal, and leaky every other seals. Mm. But yeah, quite looking forward to getting in amongst that, mate. Yeah. Giving it in nice. back looking a nice fresh mint motor, isn't it? This one here found a block, found a 200 block. Uh, there are, there's two or three options, but I'm not sure what they're like, but this is this block that I'm, we're almost certainly gonna have is from Portugal. Right. It's a standard block um, and it works out pretty good money really. Um, under two grand with, <coughs> with delivery from Portugal. Thank you, John. John can hear us on camera, so he gets the hammer out. Perfect. Does it every time. Um, so that's good news. It means that we can almost certainly get this done way before September when he needs it for his wedding. Ah, uh, right. I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of comments, people asking, why do you never use some of the sort of aluminium recreation cosy blocks? Uh, used them in the past. The one re main reason we don't use them is they're about 6,000 quid. Not cheap, not cheap then? No. Not a cheap alternative? No. So, yeah, if, they, if people want to create a lightweight motor version of the Cosworth, yeah. um, you know, with, with a, I think with a head and a block from Smith & Jones, it's probably 10 or 12,000 quid now. So it's a fair <laughs> old chunk of money, isn't it? And then you've got to build the engine and put pistons yeah. and rods and the rest of it in. They're nice. They're great motors. They're great blocks. Obviously, the aluminium, they're nice and light compared to they're the fairly, 200s. They're fairly strong. They push, they fairly, push yeah. Power. I mean, they're as strong as an alley block can be. They've got all the trick liners in them. Um, there's various options. The good thing about them, you can build them bespoke. So you can have them, make them whatever bore size you yeah. want. Um, 
they do them with through bolts. So, you know, the bolts that go through into the mains. Oh, right. They've got billet main caps um, and they're, they're head bolts as opposed to the long studs. They're like extra long studs and they go into the main caps. Oh, so yeah. the whole motor is... So it's a bit like the MK series. A little bit motors, similar, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they do some fairly funky, but you're paying the money, aren't you? Well, I suppose it's less something that you would choose to do more something that's up to the customer isn't it exactly they yeah as i say we've done it do once that. or twice in the past customers what we the last one we did was a a mark one wide arch real nice bit of kit nice. rs 2000 thing but i'd like to see one of them blocks one day that's got like we built nice. like a 600 horsepower spec all aluminium yeah nice but it's 25 30 grand isn't it it's a lot which of is, money yeah it is yeah. Lot. once you start buying all that stuff so yeah, that's the main reason we don't do that. I mean, mm. it's enough for a second hand 200, isn't it? Two grand, yeah. but yeah, yeah. it's a lot less than six. Yes, it is. So yeah, hopefully, as I say, something can come of that in the next week or two. This is your little A-series, isn't it? Yeah. So this, this come in, he'd already taken the head off Yeah. and um, took a piston and rod out. So I'm just, Stripping what's left of it, really. Okay, so this, get is it all just, washed this is just a go through? Yeah, I think so. It looks like this journal here is not very good. Ah, uh, right, so, so uh, crank could need grinding. Could need, well, probably needs grinding if yeah. hopefully it's not bent. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Customer's so, bought most of his own bits. Yeah, he's got a lot of bits. He's a decent bloke, this customer. He buys the decent stuff, so we don't mind yeah. that, really. Yeah, he's got all the bits, so. Um, yeah, just quite a simple, simple little eight, eight yeah. series, really. Turn that around fairly smartish. This yep. one here, mate, we're looking forward to getting in amongst that, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. This is the uh, the black top Z Tech, normally aspirated, going to be 210, 220 horsepower by the end of it. Customers bought a load of funky stuff. Um, we've got to buy. I think we've got to buy cams and stuff, but he's got the Piper pulleys there. Um, it's got aluminium sump, which is fairly trick. A load of other bits there. We've had a little sort out. Yeah. He's got like his front cover and all this powder stuff powder coated. Yeah. Um, I think he wants the rock rocker cover that similar colour, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, rocker cover looks funky. We'll show you that when um, when we get to that stage. But that's like a period because it's going it's in a Mark like II Escort. BDA it's like a BDA type, yeah. style cover, isn't it? So it's that'll cool. look really nice. We've got to port the head match it all, all the rest of it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah. And seeing what it produces in the end. Yeah. So yeah, got a lot going on, mate. Yep. Um, got another Cosworth coming in as well. More I normally aspirate to have a look at, but I'll leave oh, that really? for another video. Got Bit those. of a story about that. Hmm. Um, Figaro's, more of them. Coming. Got four more Figaro's on the way. Nice. Constant flow of them, which is nice. Quite nice like little, them, really. Nice little gap filler, isn't it? Yeah. Well guys, it has been a while since I've been in the office telling a little story, um, but I've just had a customer in here probably about an hour ago. Um, lovely chap, um, got several vehicles, one of which is a 1275 Mini, classic Mini obviously. Um, now he just told me a little tale, I'm not going to go into the full story, but the reason he's been coming here for years is he used to get us to do machining, etc., and then he'd build his engines and what have you. Didn't know quite so much about the Mini, um, so he took it to a garage, which is not a million miles away from here, who was a specialist in the older stuff, especially the carburetted stuff. Um, turns out that he said that there was this wrong, that wrong. He's left him to do the job. He's rebuilt the engine, this guy. Um, put a fruitier cam in it, etc. He, when he got the car back, he said that the, first of all, the clutch juddered almost so you couldn't drive it. He said it had a huge flat spot to about four and a half, five thousand revs, where it did absolutely nothing. You may as well run on one cylinder. He said when it come on song, it was down on power anyway, so it weren't right, took it back. This guy didn't know what was the matter with it. Did a few things. Um, it was a little bit better, but not much better. Um, I think they put another cam in it in the end. Um, anyway, he sort of held his hands up the guy and said, I don't know what's the matter with it. Um, this was the garage. So he ended, it, ended up taking it to a mini specialist and said, look, stick it on your rolling road, see what you find, do the checks, come up with the conclusion. He said, I need a fresh pair of eyes on it. 
So they stuck it on the rolling road, did the, the sort of tests and what have you, and they rang him up and said, look, this thing is creating about 250 PSI on each of the balls, which is way too much. So something's going on there. Um, they've rebuilt the engine. They didn't bring the machine in here, so I don't know where they went. Um, but I said to him, look, it could be, they could have chomped a load off the head, they could have chomped a load off the block, the pistons could be too proud, anything could be going on. So it looks like you're gonna have to take the head off so we can see what's going on. Um, but he, <laughs> the one thing that he did say was this garage that built the engine in the first place he took it back and said, look, you're gonna to have to sort the clutch out. Um, the guy said, well, I don't really know what's the matter with it. He said, well, you supplied the clutch, um, you fitted it, and it wasn't like it before I bought the car in to have the engine done. So you must have done something. He couldn't give him an answer. Um, so the customer said, well, I'll go out buy good quality parts. Um, it, there was a couple, because most of it was new, I think he bought, uh, a 1275 cover or something like that. He said it was like 50 quid plus the VAT. Um, give it to the garage to fit. So he's fitted it, solved the problem. Um, when he went to collect the car, the garage gave him a bill for the labor. He said, well, you know, we could have argued about that because obviously there was something wrong that they did to start with, but anyway. Um, but also included in that bill was a price for a new clutch but he said, I wouldn't even half have minded, bearing in mind it was a clutch that I supplied that they've tried charging me for, if they'd have tried charging me the 50 quid plus fat that I paid for it. He said, but they tried charging me 145 pound plus the VAT for the new clutch. He said, I didn't, unfortunately, I paid the bill without looking at it, went. He said, it was only when I got home, I thought, was that all for labor? Um, and it turns out they've charged him not just for the clutch, but for a couple of other bits um, that he bought. So I said, <laughs> how they did that? I mean, we whenever we do a job, we do a, present a job card, write on the job card the parts. Um, but I always keep paper copies of our purchase invoices with the job card number on them. Also, they are put into Sage on the computer. So I go off the job card. Um, when I'm doing the invoice, but then I also refer back to the folder and see if there's any invoices we've missed on the job card. So we know what we've bought and what we haven't bought, even if the job's been going on for months. So how they've managed to try and charge him three times as much for a clutch as he paid for it, when he actually paid for it, I do not know. But yeah, I just thought that was a bit cheeky, slightly funny in some ways. But anyway, hope you have a great evening. Until Friday's video, take care. Cheers, guys.